Hello, in this presentation I will explain how to obtain occupancy grid maps typically used in mobile robots with range sensors. The aims of the presentation are, on the one hand, to understand the concepts associated with Bayesian fusion and how it can be applied to map building problems using occupancy grid maps. In addition, I will explain how to obtain sensor probabilistic models and particularly the ones related with range sensors such as laser and ultrasound sensors. Finally, I will explain how to efficiently implement the map building process using logout's ratio probabilities. Let's start with a brief summary of Bayes' rule. This rule postulates that given sample space with disjoint events AI, the probability or likelihood of an event AI knowing that information B has happened or has been acquired corresponds to the relation between the probability of AI intersecting B and the marginal probability of B. The law of total probability transforms such marginal probability into a sum of probabilities. Bayes' rule allows to compute the posterior likelihood of an event after acquiring new information based on our prior likelihood for such event. For the specific case in which the sample space is binary, which means that this there are two only possible events, for example, heads or tails, occupied or not occupied, open or closed. In that case, the formula of the Bayes rule simplifies to the expression shown. Since we only have two possible events, the probability of one event is just the complementarity, complementarity of the other one. This formula can be expressed in a recursive form, which means that the posterior probability depends on the prior probability in the previous iteration. Sub in the key denotes the time instant with the available information. Let's see a simple example that will help us to understand the application of Bayes' rule in case of detecting whether the door is open or closed. Suppose the robot detects a door with a vision sensor and after some image processing, the vision sensor provides a 60% chance of detecting that the door is open. The initial probability that the door is open or close is 50%, which represents that our initial knowledge is null. Suppose that we observe uh, on several occasions the same situation and in all of them the camera returns a probability of 60% of being open. As you can see, after the first measurement of the probability is 60%, which corresponds exactly to the, 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 the probability that the sensor has provided because our initial knowledge was 50% of being occupied. After several measurements, the probability increases, despite of the fact that the sensor always provides the same probability. This has highlights the importance of the Bayes rule, since it's using the prior knowledge to obtain new knowledge after incorporating the measurement. Under this premise, the probability will increase and will tend to 1, which is 100% of being occupied. Occupancy grid maps are nothing more than cell maps with an occupancy probability being the probability of each cell independent of any other cell. This probability is a value between 0 and 1. Robot sensors will provide a likelihood for each cell of being occupied. Over time, since sensor measurements will include some uncertainty, the recursive base rule will provide a filtered estimation. The appearance of a map may change over time, incorporating the presence of new obstacles. And in order to build a map, we are required to know at least the robot position, and estimating such position is out of the scope of this presentation. In this figure, I show an occupancy grid map, how it looks like. In this case, I have used the color scale in which the white color means that it's 100% occupied, while the transparent color means that it's 100% free, unoccupied. This map can be used for motion planning purposes, for instance, but even also for uh, locating the robot position. Given their flexibility to represent a, a wide range of obstacles uh, of any shape, they are widely used in mobile robotics. So, in order to build a map, it is essential to have a probabilistic model of the sensor that transforms the sensor measurements into probabilities, which depends on the sensor type. For instance, in the case of a range sensor, it is expected that the probabilistic models return a probability above 0.5 near the cells that are close to the heating cell. That's the, the cell that we have detected the obstacle. 
while it, it will be lower for the rest of the cells. The important thing is that the sensor should never provide 0 or 1, since this means that having we have a total certainty that the cell is being occupied, it's occupied or not occupied. And that will imply, regardless less, uh, the the sensor um, values uh, we, we get later, uh, that will imply that the cell likelihood won't change. The algorithm gets stuck. The tensor model is something we can decide. It can be obtained from many different ways, and it can be also obtained, let's say, from an experimental model. Here I propose some ideas that I consider to be reasonable suitable for building maps. Considering that the sensor has some uncertainty associated to the measurement, it seems reasonable to use a Gaussian that describes the probability of a cell being occupied for a given measurement. The main problem of the Gaussian model is that the probability beyond the measurement distance decreases and tends to zero, which will inevitably decrease the likelihood of those cells, even if they are behind the obstacle. One way to avoid this is to include a memory effect so those cells tend to 0 0.5 instead of 0. If the sensor provides a probability of 0 0.5, the cell likelihood will not be modified after applying the base rule. In addition to this, for shorter distances, the Gaussian model also tends to zero. This is fine if, we, if there are no unexpected measurements or objects in our environment, but if we, or it might happen that we have some kind of unexpected object, then we might consider to uh, truncate uh, the Gaussian to uh, a minimum value to avoid that the cells have a very, very low value over the time. A representation that provides many advantages for a map building uh, problem is the so-called logots ratio, which is defined as the logarithm between the ratio between likelihoods. In this representation, a probability of zero implies a logots ratio of minus infinity, while a probability of 0 0.5 provides a value of zero, and a probability of one implies a logots ratio of plus infinity. The advantage of this representation is that Bayes rules update is basically transformed into a sum between two numbers, the prior likelihood, that's the value of the cell, and the sensor likelihood. Thus, updating the map implies just simply to take the previous cell values and add, and add up the sensor probabilistic model in the logots radio representation. Here we can see the saturated Gaussian I mentioned earlier how it's transformed into the logots radio representation. Only the values that are above zero will be the, those that increase the probability of being occupied, while the values that are below zero will decrease the probability. A value of zero will not modify the value in the previous iteration and therefore they, those cells can be ignored. The implementation of this algorithm is actually quite straightforward. For each sensor, we must obtain the cells that are affected by a given measurement which uh, in case of uh, rain sensors, uh, we can uh, pre-compute locally uh, for a given beam orientation. Let's say, for instance, a laser uh, sensor has a very precise beam and rays are, or the beams are treated as a ray and therefore we have to uh, do the ray tracing to find the cells that are affected by that uh, beam. But sonar sensors usually have a much wider beam, like a cone-shaped beam, and therefore we have to uh, find which uh, cells are affected by that measurement. So in the end, for each cell, we need to compute the distance relative to the sensor position, and since we are building a local map uh, for now, this can be known in advance. In the image, I actually uh, painted in red uh, the cell that corresponds to the uh, position of the sensor, while uh, I have painted in orange the cells that have been affected by that, that measurement. For each cells, we need to get now the likelihood of being occupied, uh, and then we can do that by just simply consulting a lookup table. Here I show some very basic, uh, a very basic example with very few values in the table, but obviously the resolution can be increased and obtained uh, with more uh, precision uh, to in order to obtain interpolated values. These values are actually obtained from uh, the formulas I've shown before. 
Also, notice that in, uh, in the Bayes rule update, I have included some saturation uh, functions so that the values are always between uh, a minimum uh, value L min and a maximum value L max. This will be a truncated likelihood, but the advantage is that in case we have some uh, or we are in uh, moving in dynamic environments, the changes will uh, reflect the changes of the map will reflect much faster since we are avoiding the integration of those values over the time. In this presentation, I have explained how to build occupancy grid maps uh, from probabilistic sensor models using Bayes rule and some tricks uh, for its efficient implementation. Thank you.